Okay, let's talk about who Thomas John was before he was the Hollywood uh, celebrity that he is now, the Manhattan medium and the seatbelt psychic and the Thomas John experience. Let's, let's look at this website here. Now, this is back from 2009. And back in the day, we did things a little differently. You could put a phone number in and it would tell you, you know, you were trying to do like a reverse telephone search to see who owned it because this website, one eight, well, 800notes.com was collecting, um, trying to figure out who this person was because somebody was scamming them. And let's look at this. Now, this is a website. You'll be able to see it right in the links of the um, description. So you can look this up yourself. Let's go through this as quickly as we can. So it's kind of odd, a little hokey, a lot of ads on here. But you can see what people are posting. Beware of this phone number. Someone, well, anyone named Thomas Flanagan, Kelly Jacobs, Ricky Bogeta, they use Craigslist to rent apartments that do not even exist throughout the United States. They scammed me and many others, and I have proof. If you want to see it, don't do business with anyone, whatever their name is, attached to this number. You will be robbed, scammed, and cheated out of your money. This one says, same thing happened to me. 600 bucks. I reported it to the police who stated they already had many reports. They seem to be the onto the real criminal. There's a few positive ones in here, and, and people keep noticing that it looks like it's somebody with a, a just making them up. Because why would you go to a, why would you go to a scam website and put in a phone number for like reverse looking things up and write a positive review? It just seems really odd. So we think it's probably him. This one says that their daughter's rented an apartment from them from the summer, and they can't get a hold of them. This one says they lost $400. Um, okay, this is, they're saying that uh, the person who's renting it to him is an academic. He claims to be Dr. Douglas Minim, M-E-N-N-I-N, -N -N, and gives his email, an assistant professor at Yale University. Here's the address. Um, Here's his bank account number. And then they put in here that Thomas Flanagan is actually a notable Chicago figure. This is before he became a psychic medium. And he wants two days of deposit, $80. And him and his partner claim to be academics. And so this person's feeling very cheated. And here's some of the letters that Thomas John is emailing him back. Well, I should say Thomas Flanagan. Sorry for the delay. I was in Africa with no email. What do you want me to do with the keys? They were supposed to go out, but my receptionist didn't. Okay. Sorry for the constant email attack. It's just that I may be very busy on Friday. These are, look at all this. The address on this account is our Chicago address, not our Atlanta address. Thomas has an adjunct faculty position at the University of Chicago, and we still keep a residence there for various benefit reasons and such we've used this account to establish residences here um let's see i was also the victim of a thomas flanagan craigslist scam i was duped into sending a check for a washington dc summer sublet mailed a security deposit to an address in chicago i'm incredibly suspicious of the person who's po posting positive stuff Oh, I would recommend contacting Kevin Fazell. So this is somebody that is starting to collect this information. Mm. Okay, Flanagan and Bogita are actively presently offering me a one-bedroom apartment in Sacramento for a short sublease. Um, okay. I've also sent a security deposit of $200 to Thomas Flanagan in an address in Massachusetts. And as I got there, guess what? Apartment did not exist and nobody's ever answered my calls. I've contacted the NYPD and they told me to make a small claim in, in court, in small claims court. I mean, my gosh, 
Now I see he's been using different locations to send the checks. I suppose it is more than one person involved in this fraud. He also used a Kelly Jacobs name. Um, oh, is it definitely not a joke? I've lost $400. He's subletting an apartment in Alaska. Jeez. Um, he's doing this in Denver. <laughs> Gee. Oh my gosh, there's five pages of this. I'm not going to go through all of them all. Obviously, you guys can look at them. This one says, I just got scammed by this man today in Denver. He's using the name of Rick Bogetta, Janice Bogetta, and Thomas Flanagan. $250 security deposit and $1,000 to Thomas Flanagan in Chicago. And he, I talked to Rick several times on the phone. <laughs> wow. I believe I was a victim of Carlos uh, Thomas and Carla Flanagan's scam as well. I fell for this guy's scam a year ago for a sublet in Boston that turned out not to exist. I live in Chicago, and when I reported this to the police, they just laughed and said, how are we supposed to track somebody in Boston? Oh, my gosh. A year ago, this guy used Bank of America and lived on Gray Street. Same phone number. I actually met him in person. Huge mistake, though. It was on a busy street corner. And the person I met was about six feet white, 200 pounds plus, with brown hair, late 20s to mid-30s. And I fell for the scam. It... Oh, let's see. Oh, here's all his here's all the aliases: Thomas Flanagan, Carla Flanagan, Kelly Jacobs, Ricky Bogita, Douglas Minnenen, Ace Tech Consultants. Oh boy, uh, go to the police. Okay, so this is the police who post over and over. Go to the police if you believe you've been scammed. The guy appears to have been engaged in several scams, particularly recently. Seems to be based out of Chicago, Illinois. Contact the Chicago PD. And there is a phone number that I've seen. And I call the phone number. And it is the police department in Chicago. Here it is. 312-744-8200. Detective Simpson or Detective Ryle. So... There's, it just goes on and on and on and on. Here's his phone number. Uh, he also has MySpace. That's how old this is. He is now in jail for fraud and theft, it says. Oh, this person worked a scam with eBay and jewelry about two years ago as well. Total nut job. That's the first time I've heard of that. Hmm. Please know that Thomas Flanagan or Lady Vera Parker was arrested on July 2nd is now in the Cook County Jail and his arraignment is tomorrow. Oh my God, I know this guy. He was a creep when I met him. I didn't realize he was into this kind of stuff though. Yikes. My boyfriend and I tried to sublet an apartment for a week last March. We're graduate students at Arizona State University. We're visiting for professional meetings. We transferred $100 as a deposit. Our initial contact was Kelly Jacobs, but Thomas Flanagan, her husband, was the account we transferred the money to. Here's the account number. Beware, this person has been released from jail and could be going back to his old ways. Read all these old posts and beware. I'm sure his phone number will change again. Uh, he's going back to his old ways. He's running the scam while out on bail. This has been reported the Philadelphia and New York city authorities mm. hey this clown scammed a friend of mine a year and a half ago he has been busted for a bunch of things and now he seems to be doing a scam again i talked with him online a number of times trying to figure out a way to get out of my town friend's deposit for an apartment never happened this flanagan is a pathological nut and it would be nice to see this guy busted he's a parasite that seemingly has no more accustomed compass i think the thought of getting a refund has to be thought of in terms of seeing him drop kicked into jail for a while wow 
Ah, amazing stuff. Okay, so let's look at this. All right, so this is on Top Magazine. I guess you don't know anything about it by Jay Shaft from July 9th, 2009. Drag queen Lady Vera Parker arrested in Chicago. Nice mug shot. So he's been jailed on two felony counts, one of theft and one of theft by deception. And he was 25 years old. And I'll put these links in the, so you can read them a little more um, closely if you want. Let's see, what does it say? Penalties range from probation to 30 years in prison. I don't think he got much more than a slap on his wrist. Uh, the Feast of Fun podcast. You guys got to check it out. They're great. Uh, Feastoffun.net. And I'm happy to, oh, this person says, according to popular drag entertainer Terry Yucky, the community is hysterical. She added, I'm happy to see Lady Vera Parker got what she deserved. <laughs> I, I've talked to the Feast of Fun people and they are hilarious and no, they do not like Lady Vera Parker. Manhattan psychic who ran Craigslist scam sued for owing money to a PR firm hired to fix his image. This is brilliant. So this is from um, New, York Daily, New York Daily News, not a really reputable website, but it's written by this Dennis Slath Slatherly March 23rd, 2016. And it's talking about him having a shady history. He has a past life as a scam artist. So what he did is he hired this company to wipe his um, internet presence so he could become a psychic medium. And he, he went by the name of Manhattan Medium for a while. And he didn't pay the bill. The company's name is ZTPR. And <laughs> it wasn't even a big bill. I think it was a couple thousand dollars. I think it says it here somewhere. And they wanted to help him build and exaggerate in the press. His pro public profile is a believable psychic medium. His full name is Thomas John Flanagan. He was once a well-known Chicago drag, drag queen. He was busted in 2009 for posting bogus apartment ads on Craigslist and stealing security, security deposits. He's worked out a settlement with ZTPR, but the deal was being hammered out. The matter has already been settled out of court, he says. I work with a number of publicists with great success and respect the profession tremendously. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's why this ZTPR went to the media, because um, they wanted the money. And the Mass Massachusetts-born mystic who claims to have predicted the divorce of Tom Cruise and Katie Holmes, oh, brother. And his cell phone appears on various websites where dozens of furious posters contend he pulled a security deposit scam in several states. And then <laughs> the Montebank, I love that word, he dropped his last name and rebranded himself as a medium after pleading guilty to theft and computer fraud. And he says, it was basically something I did out of necessity. I've turned my life around since then. He now is 32 and he works as a traveling spiritualist who claims to receive messages from the dead. Well, y'all, I don't know. Do you think he's changed his ways? Because what I was reading on those, um, these call thing, I, it was, it was like, like common now. It just felt, it felt like the same thing. They were saying, oh, he was, he had to cancel. He couldn't show up because somebody was sick or because he was out of town or because of this or because of that. It was just, it, it was sound like the same old thing all the time. Just, just like what we're having right now that, that hundreds of people are going through uh -huh. um, all kinds of places. Oh, he used Thomas flat again when I booked a condo in Salt Lake city. Wow. Oh, my wife, I, the baby, and our dog showed up expecting to have a condo ready and to, had to scramble when he wouldn't return our calls or emails to find a hotel. Gave the excuse of car breaking down out of town and being away from emails so he couldn't get to me. He promised to repay the deposit and extra to cover the hotel, but it's been three weeks 
since he put the check in the mail. I'm contacting the police now. This is from 2010. So this went on for a little bit of a while. Anyway, everybody, be wary. Be very, very wary.